like to go together.
working on them dudes over here. <laughs> Service is starting in about five minutes.
uh, now 11 o'clock. We'll begin the service here momentarily. <laughs> Does anybody in the family wish to have a last view? We're going to open the service up with prayer at this time. I'm going to ask Mr. Alan Lovelace if you could please come forward. Allow him 
to rest in heaven. The Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. This time, um, we're going to have a selection. Uh, selection by Miss Belinda Brown.
man, beautiful selection from this Belinda Brown. It's really a celebration of his life. You know, we can cry and grieve for a little while. You know, that's just the human nature. That's a part of life. But we have to learn to rejoice because he's at rest. And to be at rest is a better place. Um, we're going to have the reading of the obituary at this time from Miss Lenora King. Now I have an honor to you by Jen Smith and Tyler Simpson. Oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be a poem. Please excuse me. A uh, poem by David e. Smith. Called the last command. A life that's brighter than ever sun. 
grows dark as a coldest cloud. The day is here, my tour is done. My family and country turn proud. My brother's side, I fought in hell to ensure my family free. The pain I keep, I will not tell. It can only be felt by me. The life lived was one to love. Was uh, the life I lived was one of love for family, friends, and both. With no regrets, I rise above as my weakened grits let go. So do not bury me within my mind, chained to the thoughts that pass. The peace I seek, I can only find beneath the veteran's grass. March to my side, your head kept high as you follow my last command. Instead of goodbye, say simplify, say simplify. Those who love me will understand. Hey Ben, that was a beautiful poem. But a ten. Anyone who would like to come up and have words, we ask that you um, keep it to about three minutes. Uh, the floor is open at this time. share a couple of things about my uncle that I will remember. And I know one was Wanapu. I will never hear that name again. There's something. <laughs> gone. I'm just gonna miss him so much. I'm really gonna miss him so much. I'm gonna miss him at the poker games. I'm getting pop all riled up. <laughs> Talking about Gary. <laughs> There's nobody that's going to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Gary is going to be missed. <laughs> and I know he's in a better place, and I know he's happier now. <laughs> it's just a lot that we couldn't say to him these last couple of years, that I wish I could. <laughs> My Uncle Gary took care of me like I was his only child for the first couple of years until you had all of you. <laughs> he did. He did. Like, I, you know, he used to come and get me a thing. In a little car of his. You know. He used to, man, try to cook everybody's food. He thought he was the best cook. He swear he can cook. He can burn like, let him tell it. He can burn. <laughs> he can 
everything. You know, it's just going to be a lot of things, especially him showing us all how to play Texas Hold'em. Well, if it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't have never learned that the good way. Let him tell that he was the best. He taught us so many manners that we pass on to our kids and to other people that we meet around us. It's just like, there's a piece of us, a piece of me now that's going to be missing. And I know he was far away, but I always feel like he was far, far away. And I'm so sorry, y'all. I y'all. Oh. 
know he's my my daughter, my wife. That's all he made. That's all he ever done. Everything he wanted to do with about his about his children, his family, and at home. I want to go home. I'm going home. I'm moving. And Mike, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Because there were struggles when Gary was like, Bruh, mm, you got to get my... I said, no, no. Gary, I love you, man. And Mike, I'm telling you, man, you did a great job, man. Because there was sometimes I couldn't be there, but you made sure that our family knew what was going on with our brother and our father and and, 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 and uncle and whatever. I just want to say, Lenore, you said the best. Every time we left, we, I left the house or we got off that phone, G-Man out. You better not say bye. We're going to call you back. <laughs> that, 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 there you go. He can call you back. G-Man out. And I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss having to go over there to that apartment to check on him. I'm going to miss it there. You know, so... With that, guys, I just want to say that I love my brother. I got a chance to know him in a way, a special way. You know, I got a chance to know all my family. And there's still more family that I'm seeing that I still don't know. <laughs> Today, I'm going to get to know everybody. With that, guys, God bless. Thank you. Sure, I still see that smile. <laughs> you have a million dollar smile out this world as you come in and cheer up any room. But at this time, uh, we're going to pray for the family.
every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear gracious and loving Father, we come before you today asking that you will give the family the comfort, even as they have comforted others in the time of need. We ask, Lord, that they will know that that special place in their heart will always have him there to remember the good times, the joy, the smiles, the laughter, and all the many attributes that he shared with his family and friends. We ask, Lord, even in the noonday hour when they are restless and, and they miss their dad, Lord, that you will give them a sense of peace, that you will be with them to comfort them and let them know that it's going to be all right and life will continue to go on. We ask, Lord, that you can continue to keep them and to bless them. In Jesus' precious name, thank God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, a wise woman once said, that the true power a person holds is not when they are present, but when they are absent. And that was by his sister-in-law, Belinda Brown. And we can definitely see how prevalent that is here today. I'm going to speak. I'm not going to be before you long. But how do you sum up over 40 years of friendship? 40 years of a, of a, a brother who became my brother, who would then later become my friend. We had a friendship in high school, but we had an even deeper friendship when he and my sister got together and got married and had children. So, you know, you can say you know a person, but unless a person actually lived with you, that's how you really know a person. We lived together. We ate together. We did so many things together. And a friend is not something that I take lightly. If I call you a friend, that means you've had some type of impact on me. You know, we have a deeper relationship outside of just an associate. An associate is somebody you see here by and by. But a friend sticks closer than a brother. When I think back over my own life and even his, you know, I uh, can see different things that we had to deal with. So, my message today is that the struggle is real. I'm not talking about you or you, or you but I'm talking about me. You know, if it relates to you, then it relates to you, but... I'm not here to talk about anybody but myself. You know, I like what Paul said. He said, when I would do good, evil is always present. See, we know to do good, but yet we don't always hit the mark. Though I may strive for perfection, Yet, sometimes, I might fall short. So don't get caught up on looking at me. For I'm just a man and I'm subject to make mistakes. That don't mean I go out and intentionally or purposely make mistakes. It's just a part of human nature. I look at... Uh, 
my nieces and nephews, my sister, you know, and she's a strong woman and she, you know, she's been there and she's tough. She's as tough as they come. They call her Kitty, I call her Cat. <laughs> she passed Kitty up a long time ago. <laughs> But she's tough. But she can never replace the man. A man, just his presence, demands discipline. Just his presence in the household makes a difference. Because I remember when I was a kid, and when daddy would go away, the boys would play. <laughs> you went to get a little naughty, a mischievous, whatever you want to call it. But when daddy came home and mama told him, your eyes got big because you already knew what was about to happen. It's going down. Yeah. I don't know. They don't have the same type of discipline today because when I got discipline, I couldn't sit down. My butt was told up. And a lot of times I got disciplined for stuff that I didn't even do. Oh, I'm going to make sure I got the right one, baby. Okay, enough about that. But, uh, Gary, Gary was always having this big smile and it doesn't matter how I feel. If I was down and I go to Gary, my spirits just went up. It was like a natural high. It didn't take no alcohol, no, no drugs or anything, just being in the presence of good company and then he would cheer me up. Because he always got something funny to say. <laughs> and then we can move on. Yes. But. Everything has a beginning. A middle. And an end. In the beginning, the Bible says, was God. In Genesis 2 and 7, it talks about how the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Notice man was just clay. He was nothing. It was lifeless. It's like we art. You create statues or you draw pictures, but there's no life in them. They're just pictures. But God, he, he took from the sand, the dust of the ground, and formed man, and it said, in his own image and likeness. But it wasn't until he breathed into man the breath of life, man became a living soul. That first man was Adam. So, Adam had a relationship with the Creator. They had a personal relationship that he had, that he trusted Adam to name all the animals on the planet. And he saw Adam alone and he said, it's not good that man should be alone. So I'm going to send him a helpmate like he did with Gary. He sent him a helpmate. But with the first Adam, he said Eve. Now, I'm going to get through this quick, but I want you to follow me. Eve 
ate up some forbidden fruit. Who knows what it was? But it was forbidden to eat of that fruit. But nothing happened when Eve ate. But when that man ate, something happened. God didn't say nothing when the woman ate. You didn't hear anything. It wasn't until the man ate. And then he came and said, well, Adam, where are you? And now eating of the forbidden fruit? And the first thing he said, well, well that woman you gave me, you know, huh? he blamed it on her. One thing about men today, we have to learn from that, and we need to take ownership and take responsibility. Because at the end of the day, we're responsible. Because if the head ain't lined up and the head ain't right, then you can't expect nothing else to fall in line. But if the head ever lines up, then you can best to believe that everything else is going to fall in line. Because God has an order of things. But when the man failed, he fell away from God. Now, he's caught up in sin. Now, he begins to struggle with some things. Man have been struggling ever since. And that's why I can say the struggle is real. You can struggle on your job. Some folk are struggling with uh, uh, addiction, drug abuse. Some people are struggling with alcohol. Whatever the struggle is. Some people are struggling in, in relationships. Struggling with pornography, obesity, abuse, racism. And now... I gotta say this for everybody because it ain't just me. <laughs> but now the whole world is struggling with a pandemic. <laughs> the struggle is real. We can look at people in the Bible and we can look at uh, Paul. Paul struggled. When I would do good, he was always present. But even though, I mean, this man wrote most of the New Testament. And yet, the Bible says that he had a thorn in the flesh. He was struggling with something. Why are we struggling? Because of sin. Once sin entered into the earth, once man transgressed God's law, it separated him away from God's image and away from God's likeness. Because remember in the beginning, we was created in his image and in his likeness. Now we've fallen away from it. See, in the beginning, our minds, Adam's mind, housed the knowledge of God. He knew nothing but God. Now, he's, he knows himself. He sees how undone and how imperfect and how messed up he is. And as long as we continue to look at ourselves, all we can see is imperfection. But when we look to God, what he sees is perfection. The thing is, you have to be lined up. So now what needs to happen is our spirit has to be reconnected with God. It needs to be regenerated. We need to be rebirthed. And when you to be rebirthed is to come into the knowledge of truth. Because truth will set you free. And who God sets free is free. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean you're going to get it right every time. I don't know about you, but I had to crawl before I could walk. And then I had to walk before I could run. And then I could have to run before I could fly. In other words, you got to start somewhere. Even as a baby, it sits on milk. That baby, when it first comes into this world, it comes in here with the ability to learn. The baby, I'm just a baby. 
You know, that baby don't that baby is learning. It's picking up every word you say, everything you do. Why? Because it's all up under you and it's making a connection. And once it makes that connection, it's that they soak up everything like a sponge. And we don't really know the impact that it's having on them until they start mimicking us. Wait a minute, did, did I do that? Did I? What? And then you got to check yourself. <laughs> Wait a minute, something that needs to change. You know, because I don't want them to be like me. I want them to be better than me. So even if that baby has the ability to learn, so do we. And the Bible teaches, he says, he says, learn of me. See, Jesus, we call him Jesus here in America, but he said, they will call me many names. So they would call him Messiah, Yahshua, many names, Master. So I learned to say, okay, with these so many names, what is he to me? I tell you, he's my provider. He's my protector. I put my trust in him and his word. So it's about developing a relationship. Then as you develop a relationship, like me and Gary, we had a relationship. And then that relationship turned into a friendship. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through me. So the only way to get to him is through Jesus. And if Jesus is the way, it's time to figure out which way did he go. Because if I follow his way, then I'm following the truth. And the truth leads to life. So, he said, he's the way, which way did he go? I don't know, what steps did he take? Even as a child, learning the ABCs, eventually they start learning how to read. Well, when we read the word, it's nothing but words. But if you ever apply that word to your life, it will begin to transform you from the inside out. Because the Bible he teaches, he said, I came that you might have a life and have life more abundantly. God wants us to enjoy life. He didn't put us here to be miserable. No. Even as a father to a son, what father sees his son struggling and going through will not reach down and pick his son up and dust him off and it's okay, you know what I'm saying, and put him back out there to go play. But well, that's the same way our Heavenly Father is. All you have to do is trust him. And he'll pick you up. He'll clean you up. And he'll turn you around and put you back out there. Now go back out there and try it again. And try it again until you get it right. And one thing about Gary, he never gave up. Tried it again and tried it again. Because the struggle is real. We struggle with so much in life. And I realized that I can't do this on my own. And that was a tough decision for a man to make because a man feels like, wait a minute, hold it, I don't need no help, I can do this, I can handle this. But sometimes you just have to admit that by yourself, you can do nothing. But when you got numbers, you can accomplish a lot. By myself, I can't build a house. But if I got some help and I have, I have the, the concrete over here, I have the carpenters over here, I have the electricians, I have the plumbers, together we can make something happen. And that's how it is in the kingdom of God. That's how it is in the kingdom. So 
so he would definitely be missed. I love my brother. You know, we did so much together. We struggled together. We were working a job up in Middletown doing concrete. You know, he told me about it. I thought, okay, yeah, I'll go out. I'll work with you. My brother went and got me a job. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you know. I got him a lot of jobs. And now it's like, you know, payback. <laughs> so we out here and we working. I'm taking concrete and moving it around on the Bobcat. Because they were walking and they were doing stuff the hard way. So I took the Bobcat, we loaded up 80 pound brakes. And I rolled it around right to the job site. And we were working out, making it so easy. The other people who just happened uh, to, uh, how can I say this? We were only two. Black men on the job side. So then the white guys come and they take our bobcat and they doing what we doing and got our stuff all the way on the back, back of the building. Now here we are, we got to carry, wait a minute, hold on. We carrying these bricks what we need it. And we need y'all to work on that side. And now here we are carrying bricks from the front of the building all the way to the side of a jewelry hotel. I know you know the jewelry still. That's a long building. And here we are going to the middle with 80 pound bricks. So they let you know your daddy was tough. He wasn't no little weakling. He wasn't no wimp. And we got together at lunchtime and I said, he said, man, you think of I ain't gonna keep doing this. I said, man, you think of what I'm thinking? He said, yeah, I'm thinking what you're thinking. We left at lunchtime and we didn't come back. <laughs> No, oh, you're not going to do this to us. <laughs> but like I said, the struggle is real. And then here they're going to take the easy way out. <laughs> the devil is a lie. <laughs> well, we're about to close the service up. I told you I wouldn't be before you long. Uh, I didn't really have anything planned. I tried to take notes, and my sister called me and said, oh, yeah, you're going to be the MC. I'm like, wait a minute, hold it, hang up for 30 minutes. <laughs> but it's all right, it's all right. Uh, we're going to have a moment of prayer, and then we're going to uh, wrap the service up. Everybody wouldn't mind standing to your feet. It is a beautiful service. I believe he would he would be proud. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear gracious and loving Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together to send our brother, our friend, hey, husband, grandfather, the city mouth Lord the right way. We ask that you will just continue to bless and look upon the family and keep them, Lord, and help them to come into the knowledge of truth that they may come to know you and know the power of your love, that they may demonstrate that love in the earth. May they take all the good qualities, the values and morals that Gary instilled inside of the home and impart that into their children and their children's children that the legacy of his spirit may continue to live on through the lives of others for generations to come. We ask these things all in Jesus' precious name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Um, Alrighty. Uh, uh, all the Paul Bearers, if you don't mind, if you would come to the door. Thank you all, families and friends. Uh, we're going to be going to the gravesite, which will be at the Veterans Hospital.
Because remember, it's all about having a personal relationship.
and dust to dust. Um, this will conclude the service at this time. So do remember the family and prayers. Thank each and every one of you for coming out and uh, being with us during this time of grief. Hi, my name is John. I spoke to Lenore on the phone to organize, to make sure things were organized. And whenever, whenever we lose a loved one, we know it's never easy. We've got to remember that we need to just remember the memories and celebrate his life now, right? It's never easy to lose a loved one. But I'm the Honor Guard Commander for Beaver Creek Post 8312. And my alternate, we both served in the U.S. Army. And we wanted to be here to honor him. So it's our, our honor. Okay, so you remember that when you see your flag, all your family members and friends, and just let them know that your father was loved and he did his job. Okay? So, Thank you. You bet. God bless you. Thank you.